I've been doing a bit of research the last little while on Fort Gary horse tanks and their steel wool camouflage. This style was unique to the Garys and can be seen on nearly all their tanks from mid-March 1945 until the end of the war. You can find many pictures of their Shermans covered with this manner of camouflage and you know without even looking at a description that it's a Fort Gary horse tank. There is some debate as to whether they use steel wool or horse hair, but I did find an entry in B-Squadron's War Diary that lists it as steel wool. But the usage and debate of the camouflage of these Fort Gary horse tanks is not what I'm here to share, perhaps in another video. While doing research online at the Groningen Archives and looking at all their pictures from 1945, I ran across five different pictures of Mark VI Stuart tanks camouflaged with steel wool. As I have seen no other unit camouflage their tanks this way, and the Fort Gary horse were heavily involved in the liberation of Groningen, as well as other operations in the area surrounding the city, I assumed that these tanks must be from Fort Gary horse. I was especially interested in this since I have never seen any reference to Stuart tanks camouflaged with steel wool, and three of the photos were of very good quality and taken together in the same spot. The same inquisitive boy can be seen in two of the pictures looking on, and two of the pictures are showing the same tank. I was impressed with the quality of the pictures for the time, but with very little background other than the fact they were taken sometime in April of 1945 and in the Groningen area. I thought it would be a shame if these pictures would never have a date and place associated with them. I set out with not much to go on other than the gut instinct that these pictures were probably taken before the liberation of Groningen. Using several maps and regimental war diaries, it was easy to establish that the attack on Groningen was from the south and west and the units involved in it assembled in the Pattersvold Ilda area prior to the attack. The route of travel for the Fort Gary horse was from Assen, along the west side of the Nord Willems Canal. The only points of reference in the pictures were a fairly distinctive building, a bridge, and the remains of a foundation. I was also able to glean a couple of pieces of information on the one photo that did confirm that it was Fort Gary horse. We can see the one soldier's hat badge is definitely Fort Gary horse, and a cut-off armist service marking on the rear Stuart, showing a 2, which would be the 52 of the Fort Gary horse in the 2nd Canadian Armoured Brigade. Armed with that information, I was searching water crossings everywhere along that route to try and place it. I read through the war diary to try and find any information that could be of help. I came across an entry that had a lot of promise and turned out to be the key in finding out what we needed to know about these three Stuarts. This is the story of Battle Group Beatty. On April 14, 1945, the battle for Groningen was well underway. Lead elements of the 2nd Canadian Division had reached the edge of the city the day before, and on the 14th the battle was truly underway. While it wasn't the longest or bloodiest urban fight the Canadian Army engaged in during the war, it was one of the largest, involving nearly the whole strength of the 2nd Division, with armor support being provided by the Fort Gary Horse. The Garys established their headquarters in Pattersfold, and across the Nord Willems Canal to the east lay the small town of Heron. On the evening of April 13th, three armored cars of the 14th Canadian Hussars reached Heron after their main force had liberated Ludlaren. The Dutch people welcomed the Canadians to Heron, displaying the Dutch flag for the first time in years. Resistance members became active in the town, arresting local members of the Dutch Nazi party, as well as several German soldiers, and imprisoning them in the Institute for the Blind. The Germans had withdrawn from the town, but the Hussars' armored cars were not there to stay. They did not have the strength to hold the town from the Germans that were set up between Heron and Groningen, so they left and returned to their headquarters. After they left, German patrols re-entered Heron, this left the resistance in a tight spot. They had started to perform public actions, but complete liberation had been stopped short after the Canadian withdrawal. The resistance hunkered down for the night in the town hall and tried to avoid a confrontation with the Germans. The Germans tried entering the building but were unable to get past the barricaded door and gave up without detecting the resistance members hidden inside. After a tense night for the resistance, the Germans prepared themselves in the morning for a Canadian attack. When the attack didn't occur throughout the day, the resistance got a little more worried about their situation and knowing that some Canadian units were headquartered in Patterswold, they managed to get a hold of the Canadians by telephone. Recognizing the resistance delicate situation but having very few tanks available with most of the regiment involved in the fight for Groningen, as well as no combat infantry, the Gary CO, Lt. Col. Eric Wilson, put out a call for non-combatant members of regimental headquarters and A. Echelon that wanted to volunteer as infantry to Company 3 Stuarts and 3 Shermans 
to clear the Germans out of Heron. On this mild, clear day, while B Squadron battled grimly for the pivot town of Groningen, Regimental Headquarters, and A Echelon went off on a Cox's army chase after the German troops remaining in and around Heron. The CO announced that any non-combatants wanting a fight could join a regimental potpourri heading out on our unexplored right flank. Regimental Headquarters donated three recce tanks under Lieutenant Swainson, Major Rushforth contributed three Shermans under Captain Johnson, and all sorts of people emerged from cookhouses, three-ton lorries, offices and whatnot, to jump into a 60 CWT and a half track in what came to be known as Battle Group Beatty. This is where we catch up with Lieutenant Swainson and his three stewards. Here seen securing the crossing over the Nord Willems Canal between Pattersvold and Heron. Though the area has changed a bit, the small canal with the bridge pictured in the background is gone today, but the building next to the crossing is still there. I was able to identify Lieutenant John Swainson along with Sergeant Harrison as they were reasonably famous from being in the first Canadian tank to cross into Germany a month earlier on March 3rd. With such a nice clear publicity photo we can identify them both in two of the pictures with their Stuart tank, which has somehow acquired a windshield. The Germans must have truly been astonished by the strange tactics of their foe. There was no evidence of organization or discipline, yet two enemy anti-tank guns were captured after their crews were dispersed by our small arms fire and the afternoon ended with a prisoner bag of 33, including a German captain and two quizzling snipers in civvy clothes. After two hours of this unorthodox warfare, the Camerons of Canada arrived, quite shocked to find the riotously peculiar Fort Garry infantry master of a town they had no business being in. With the Cameron Highlanders there to secure Heron on their way to Helpman, the Garry's job was done and they returned to Pattersfold. The liberation of Groningen was completed on April 16th when the remaining Germans in the city surrendered. Lieutenant Swainson survived the war, but unfortunately died three weeks after VE Day on May 31st after a jeep rollover. His brother's diary details the tragic loss for the family, their joy at war's end that he had survived and would eventually be coming home, followed a few weeks later with the tragic news of his death. I hope you enjoyed this dive into previously unidentified pictures. Credits can be found in the description, but a special thanks for the help provided by Ewell Stoppel's Battlefield Tours, Gord Crossley of the Fort Garry Horse Museum, and the Groningen Archives. Thanks for watching.